So our game is the Zombie Shooter by Joe Zabani. So what our program does is it's a first-person shooter against the undead. You're looking, you're zoomed in on a sniper scope. Zombies are spawning and progressively moving towards you, and you have to kill them to defend yourself. What our program does is it draws the scope, draws the background, it displays things like uh, instructions in the score. The zombies respond and they increase in size to make, to make it look like they're coming towards you. And then if they get close enough, they'll scratch you and kill you. So this is just some gameplay. Uh, Mars, we'll do the demo at the end. Um, basically, so that scratch is when you die. And then it says game over after uh, like a second or two when it scratches you. There's night vision. It's not really useful, but if you have more time, you can make it useful. And then, yeah. So this is a pseudocode. Draw the background. Display score instructions. Draw the zombies first and the scope second. And how the scope works is everything's black except for what you see inside the scope. That's transparent. So you can see the zombies behind it. And the zombies respond. They increase in size to make it like they move forward. And then the scope, it follows around your mouse, and when you click it, it shoots. And then there's an arena of zombies, and if you shoot a zombie, you kill it, and it's removed. And then when they reach a certain size, they kill you. So um, we had one, one of the hardest challenges we had was figuring out movement, because we it was hard to think about because first we just thought about having the zombies like actual move their locations, but that wouldn't make them look like they're coming at you, so we have to make them get bigger. And we're also thinking about uh, making zombies animated by you can't use a gif, you could use a gif, but we could like, run through a lift, uh, loop of pictures that would cause it to lag a lot. Basically, we downloaded the just static images off the internet, and then we started them out small, and then we made them bigger and bigger and bigger. We moved it to the left because if we just had them, if we didn't move it to the, to the left as they were getting bigger, like uh, then it would just look like they're going past you instead of actually moving towards the point. So yeah, that's because the origin of the image is at the top left corner instead of the center. So another problem we had was the hit registry. Since the, zomb since the picture is a PNG file, so even though the it's transparent, the actual file the, of the picture is a rectangle around the zombie. So when, when we had the original hit registry, it's it was basically if you shoot anywhere inside the picture, it'll kill the zombie. But what, what ended up happening was like if you shoot over here, it'll still kill him. So to solve this, we uh, made hitboxes. So we pretty much had had the same thing as before, where if you shoot anywhere inside the zombie, you kill him. But we added to that, so if you shoot anywhere inside the box, and if you don't shoot in a certain rectangle or square, and then we added like rectangles and squares, like to the side of the zombie's head, behind his legs, and between his legs, to make it uh, make it more look like you're shooting an actual zombie instead of just the box around him. So uh, if we had more time, we'd actually make the zombies animated. Also, like add items like power ups, like you can shoot it and it'll boost your score. Uh, we have different zombies, we have like three or four, and then so it's kind of monotonous. And then uh, we add new levels, or like, you know, easy, medium, hard, where the night vision would be useful. to make everything black. The picture isn't as big as the screen, so what I did was at the ends of each picture, I drew a rectangle extending from the edge of the picture to the end of the screen that's black on every corner. <coughs> that's what happens when the zombie gets too close, it scratches you and then you lose. So, hi all, and um, we created a text-based adventure game, and we didn't really have much to name it, so we called it The Great Rock Adventure. Okay. So, the great, uh, the great Rock Adventure is a short uh, adventure text-based game that, that takes place um, in a uh, 
medieval castle that's in a sense broken down. And some features that we had included were background music, items, um, and like one sound effect in a boss battle. So um, the plot is that you don't know who you are, and all you know is that you're in an abandoned castle, and you have all the basic questions like, how did you get there? Why are you there? And you try to answer that uh, through your journey, but we didn't really um, implement a complete story since we didn't have much time. So. such as north, east, south, and west. Like, what if you wanted to add like, specific directions to more specific rooms, such as go up when there are stairs? Our solution was anchor a hash map. They're sort of like a array list, except they also store, like, beside, they also store, like, descriptions. So by using a hash map, it's pretty easy to store specific, like, directions for specific rooms, such as, like, upper stairs or ladder for ladder. So we initialize it in our room class with this line here. So, so our favorite part is we only want it to be accessible by the room class. Uh, it takes in a string, like a direction, and then it returns a room where that direction will lead to. And we name it map. So uh, after we made a hash map, we had to redesign, <coughs> like refactor the entire code, so that it would, so that like other parts will take advantage of it. Yes. So, um, last things we so first the entire display screen, choose whichever one will pick this one. And <laughs> you don't have any idea. <laughs> 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 It's also ridiculously hard. We will load other enemies for you later, but... Is that 3-4? I'm going to kill the enemy. It's the first time. It's the first time. It's the first time. So in our... Uh, the core of our project is... Well, the idea is we have stationary enemies that fire bullets. Literally, that's what they do. We have a bomb system. The bomb clears out our um, bullets in a certain radius of the bomb. We have lives, and we also have score. Score is multiplied with each mob you kill. Then, of course, there's a movable player that follows this little mouse, and it auto fires because no one wants to close fire. That just takes effort. And then, structure, we have one main class called Entity. This is really great, because that means that if we ever want to do hit detection, there you go. Everything shares the same hit detection method. And so, everything extends the Entity class. We have location, move vector, radius, sprite, drive, act methods, a little bit of AI as well. Right, so as you can see by demonstration, there are a lot of bullets and a lot of things on the screen at once. So it would have been very simple to have everything be in a single array list of entities, because they all extend entities, and then loop through that and update. But then we realized that there would be a lot of collision checking. So in order to do that, we have to loop through the array list and then find which ones are whichever projectile we're looking for, and then loop through, loop through the array list again and then find what we're checking to collide with. And then we have to check if it actually collides. And we have to do that for everything in this religion. So we figured it would be much more efficient just to split it into three array lists of random cost-out projectiles. Do we just 